those who followed me for a few years will understand that I've been on a quest for many years to uh, understand more about certain mental illnesses. And over the years, I've connected with hundreds of people online who've been like witnesses or victims of this very same kind of death. It's like, yeah, it's kind of death. And it's like, what? But yeah, you'll never be the same again after that. You'll never be the same again. And it's like, um, it's a great unspoken thing until people get themselves in situations where they're trapped in hell, right? They get so miserable and depressed and upset and it just seems like it's never going to end. It always ends, but sometimes you feel like it's not going to. And that's where people kill themselves. It's when people die that, when they get that feeling that there is no light at the end of the tunnel. And for years, men used to die of that. And then the internet came along and then, well, loads of them got saved to say, you know, you tried your best. It's like, you know, there was nothing you could do to help that poor girl. So you poured all your, your love into something you like. She was so upset. She was so depressed. I felt so sorry for her. And then, you know, next thing you know, we're together. And then suddenly everything's fine. She's absolutely great. And then weeks later, it's like, oh, world explodes. Months later. And it'd be a matter of, the rug gets pulled on every element of it and your nature as a man is to think you somehow failed because there's no doubt you're getting the fucking blame. Even if they say, no, it's not you, it's me. Of course it's you. You must have failed. You did your best and you failed. It means you're a loser. It means you're a failure. And it's like you could never have won in the first place. So I studied that. I've studied the, the Marilyn Monroe thing and, and something I studied closely was that the playwright that she married, Arthur Miller. It's like, yeah, I got to appreciate him. Started finding bits of his stuff. I started uh, listening to things he had to say and thinking, what did, what did that do to you? to think you'd found the one like that from nothing. And then it turned out that that she's just a, a, a mental patient on the loose. And you thought in some of something she had to say that was a connection she'd made. It's like she pressed the right buttons and suddenly he had this really deep emotional connection to her as to where he had this sort of hard exterior and she just melted him. And got and and he's like, oh my god, completely. She touched him so deeply. It's like, oh my god, it's like you guys are reading and in, reading into her something that just isn't there. It's like. She's actually a, a bemused person who's been shuffled around and playing a part that's not really got too many moving parts. It's like, what a movie that is. What a way of telling that story because, you know, there's plenty of people who've lived unfortunate lives that ended up like hers but didn't go to Hollywood, didn't go all the way to Hollywood, didn't go all the way around the world, didn't become a you know, sex symbol. And they're like, that movie gets it right as to, it sets it in motion in the way that I'd expect, because I've studied the story. I've, I've, I've been away and, you know, the, the, the material it's made from, I've analysed it myself and, and looked at it with more modern understandings, because women's problems, right, are a taboo. I got uh, all the hate in the world from the feminists once upon a time for openly talking about borderline personality disorder. They just attacked because they kind of programmed to defend. We don't talk about that because 
when they're talking about that, they're talking about me. And if they know what I'm like, they'll know I'm a fake. So you, you, it's like you you could dog whistle it and people who were that would be like, shut up about that. And feminism, right, enables it. So there's this terrible, terrible truth to that, that movie, to that story. And it is that... <sighs> Norma Jean was anyone's. Like, you know, it's a terrible thing to have to say, isn't it? But it's like anyone could just get a hold of her and say, oh, you're nice, and just have sex with her, and she wouldn't be able to resist you or say no or anything. She'd just take it. She was literally anyone's. Didn't fight back, didn't. So that, tale, that movie tells a tale, but it's like, she wasn't just that straight up then. It's like, she's like, she was ended up raised in an orphanage, right? What are orphanages like when someone looks like her? What do they end up getting in in, uh, orphan, in that orphanage when they're braised? Well, they'd be getting a lot of dick and she's not right in the head. And it'd be a matter of, right, bend over. So it's like years later, she ends up in the office of a Hollywood producer and uh, she sits down in front of him and he sets about just bending her over and fucking her. And she doesn't say anything. And then it's next, you've been cast, you got the part. Excuse me? Yeah, you pass your audition, you got like a five picture deal, well done. And it'd be a matter of he didn't even listen to her speak. He didn't have an, he didn't have any interest at all in what she was like acting, what she might be about. He didn't know that she was a fucking out of control lunatic fantasist who can only maintain herself through imaginary alters, characters. It's like because real her is in agony all the time. But real her seeps through all the time. And there's a part in it that was fantastic where some actors were, actors and different people were a screen test of hers. And she was she was uh, auditioning for a movie where she was to pay, play a woman who was mentally and emotionally disturbed. Like a, a, you know, a, a, a historical woman, she was, she auditioned to play one. It was, and it's creepy. And then, it has these actors talk about her. And then they're actually all notable actors. You'd see them, but the Skarsgård guy was there. He only has a little bit part, the the, the, the middle Skarsgård guy. Um, and um, chap out of Deadwood, so he called, really good actor. Um, Garrett Dillahunt little scene where these actors saw her screen test and one said it's like you weigh it don't you it's like she's a, just a mental person it's like she's a mental person it's like she's coming and she's playing a mental person and it's like people who aren't actors they look at it and say oh my god isn't she brilliant an actress at playing a mental person but us actors who are pretending to be mental patients. We know that she's a mental patient. Not like, who's hiring her? Who's hiring her? It's like she's a lunatic. We can tell, we get it, that that's real, that what she's doing. And uh, Dilla Hunt's character walk, looks at her walking away and saying, yeah, but do you see that little girl's ass? It's like, damn. They didn't give a fuck. They knew. It's like, yeah, she's just a lunatic. It's like, if this wasn't Hollywood, um, her fate in this world would have been to fall into the hands of a pimp, be passed around until she killed herself. That would have been her fate in the world of be when when they find out when it's a matter of when she gets found out. Fuck. 
this is all you're good for. That's how women like that used to end up. It's a terrible thing to say, but that is the end they used to... Still happens. Still happens. They get used up and they die of drug overdoses. And it's like, that was what she had in store, but she became a Hollywood star instead. But she was that. Like, clueless, pretending to be someone, doing her best. And it's like, it's not as if, it's like, yeah, fair enough, they put her in that place, but it's like, they had no idea that she was a, a straight up, someone who should be institutionalised. And then they did the best to try to accommodate her, and everyone tried to accommodate her, and no one could. And everyone feeling sorry for her made them absolutely useless at helping her, or trying to understand what was wrong with her. Because there's, there's things I weighed up about her when I was studying Miller, Famous guy, I'm smart. It's like, how did you fall in with a crackpot borderline like that? You should know better than that. And it's like, well, I did the same a few years ago. I should have known better as well. But I fell into the same thing as him. I said, oh, you poor thing. And, and so talented. So beautiful. If only, you know, you could have just a, a settled, decent home, you know family as if it was some kind of magic spell that might work you know decent settle down she kind of believed that too but she's got no idea what that is that's like i tell you it's like late in her life there's been people who've gone to incredible lengths to try and help her by giving her some she got no structure in her life no people I have no childhood, remembers things, doesn't remember things, but the things she remembers when she runs her mouth are the most sordid and terrible and despicable things that have happened to her, which may or may not have happened. But if they did happen, to hear them from this person would leave you having nightmares and traumatised and feeling also sorry for her. As soon as you start feeling sorry for someone like that, you're not going to be able to help them because you're bouncing off their defense mechanism. Like the, the illness is defending itself and the defense mechanism that it chooses is to shock people with the horrible tales it tells. So you never get through it. So it's like she could burn out therapists, but then even worse, she gains the sympathy and then they try and fix her. No one can fix that. Can't fix that to this day. They can understand it though and decide not to try and fix it which is what they do they ignore it like why because if we start to try and treat and fix it we'll get sucked into it and no one pays enough money in this world to get sucked into that kind of problem and that'll be the truth of it so it's like what she suffered from being right you could say it would be PD, but that would be a bit of a... Of a right, I'll put it this way. I'd call it BPD because she was failed between the ages of zero and three and four and seven. She was failed in two developmental cycles. So the fundamental problem she's got is that emotional development cycle. So BPD would be the place where it all began. The thing that opened the door to every other single thing that can be wrong with you. Whereas you can observe, because that's the thing about that. Um, there was nothing story-wise in that movie that I hadn't actually, or didn't actually already know that was an, wasn't an anecdote about her life. So it was well-researched. So it's like those who are fans and have followed it, have read you know read books and things they'll be like yeah well that's that's the timeline that's the like... <sighs> lost my train of thought for a second talking about timelines yeah agreeable I did, most of it as things I'd read about before
slight <clears throat> just to try to wrap up actually because I might actually talk about this again I might watch that again even though it was long it was a thing is it was long in a way where right you know it's going to end and you're seeing something that's really sad I can't Unfortunately, it's like the, the thing where the chap he had recommended it, saying it was like heartbreaking and moving and all. No, I, that it doesn't affect me like that. It's like, why? It's all, I'm kind of immune to it. Like, what? So, yeah. Um, having someone like that in my life uh, actually uh, rescued me of this um, uh, sympathy. It doesn't help them. It doesn't help them. It actually stands in your way of understanding them. Stands in your way of actually better, you know, making the world a better place for them, if you can. Feeling sorry for people who, 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 are, who, who, who getting sympathy is kind of a fix for them because that's part of it. And then you feeling all sorry for someone, making it so, you know, if you feel sorry for someone, you're more likely to believe them. And if they tell you shocking things just to say, oh, like, I was gangbanged, things like that, right? Traumatize you in your imagination, terrorize you. So it's like f feeling sorry for them, it's, it, it, it's not helping them. I don't say throw scorn and hate, but feeling sorry for them is it, they, they, sometimes they think they're winning when people feel sorry because it means they get the way but it's not helping them get better it's not therapeutic for them in, in, the, in the real world you know they'll be just blasting their way through people making assumptions and getting what they want but if you're trying to help them with their depression that, that underlies everything which is why they're projecting the world because they can't they can't see they, they can't bear to look what's within and if you and they're suffering it and if you try and like reach out to that person all they've got for you is a story that will poison your well and turn you into a source of sympathy it's like oh well, the devil wins we never get anywhere that movie is probably the most honest telling of the kind of conundrum that she finds self that she found herself in. As to where there's no one else in the world but her, and she's lost, and she's like suggestible, and she's fickle, and she's confused, and she's been fucked with. It's like the, the tricks and things done to her to gaslight her and pull the rug. Just evil things done to her. And I don't mean evil things like, oh, she was like, beaten. she was beaten. But there's more evil things you can do to people than, than beat them and rape them. There's actually worse things you can do to people than that. And worse things than that were done to her. Worse things than that. Like terrible, terrible psychological games played with her from people who had a mind to control her. Understanding that she was suggestible. The first real Hollywood sort of crowd she finds herself in her. Just a pair of gay pimps who just fuck her all over the place. Fill her head with full of ideas and the next minute they're all in love. It's like, it's a terrible sad story about what happened to her, but it's a matter of, um, there was no ever, never an option for her for a regular life. She had to be either a, a prostitute or an actress. And it's like, how, what, what makes you say that, John? It's like, well, she couldn't handle anything on her own. It's like she'd be just run by pimps who tell her what to do. And she might not like it, but she'd be at home. She'd have daddy. That thing that her mother did to her where she turned her father into an imaginary figure and showed her a photograph once and it become like God to her. And then for someone to impersonate and start writing letters to her, pretending to be her long lost daddy. Um, that's if <laughs> that's the most despicable thing I've ever heard of. 
by way of brainwashing, like brainwashing a child and traumatizing a child, then we get to talk about labels and disorders later. And it's a matter of, well, it doesn't matter what label we put on it. Someone who's done what was done to her by the mother who's like, she tried to murder her probably more than once. Tried to kill her. She blamed her for all her troubles and she tried to kill her. But that'd be just one of a multitude of sins. Your mother had terrorised her, her entire childhood until she was taken away from her mother. But you know it is, don't you? Imaginary father and... But mummy's good sometimes. Mummy's all she's got. She's a fucking drunk. Totally embittered and off her face all the time. Like, what chance would she have? And it's like... Well, if she hadn't been as pretty as she'd been, right? She'd have probably never left that orphanage. She'd have been, she'd have been, she'd have left the orphanage where she was dumped, and gone straight to being institutionalised. But hey, she can sing, dance, and act. Looks the part. So it's like she walks in, and everyone assumes that she's a normal person. And then they work out that she'll play a ball for, like, well, anyone can have sex with her. Can they? It's like the thing that they sold about her to the world is like that she's like so carefree that even you, Mr. Window Cleaner, might actually have a chance with her. She's like, hey, right? And the terrible truth is, in real life, you probably might have done. Could have just grabbed hold of her and just bundled her to into you know into a hedge and done the deed and she'd be like okay you done now and be yeah thanks for that never talk about it again it's bad as to where that to, to unlock this her story it's like how many times was she uh how many times was she like uh, raped or uh, you know had sex as a child in the orphanage she came through it's like you tell me it's like if you look like her and you've got no one in the world to protect you you're going to get preyed upon and you're going to get preyed upon when men in places like that start to notice you when you're about 13 maybe even younger and it's like when they saw her turn up and they saw how beautiful she was and how well spoken she was and how she could act, they didn't think to, didn't give it a second thought that she might actually be someone who's disturbed, damaged. And they just enabled her, they just enabled her into an early grave. Remember now as like a kind of pioneering sort of woman who did whatever she liked. It's like, no, she, were, she went wherever she was prodded and poked and had no agency because she couldn't think for herself. And it'd be that sad and that real tragedy. But difference with difference between her story and the story of somebody else who ends up palm star dead, right? It's the same story set in a different time, but it's the same story. 